checking it out. I'm gonna let Jess fill in as we go because she tells people how to ride bikes safely all the time. Yes. Something that she does. Uh, but we're gonna take my dad for a quick ride through Paris to demonstrate it is pretty safe uh, riding in town. There are some tricky bits and there are some parts of the city that will probably forewarn you. Uh, might be a little bit complicated, especially on certain days and times. Uh, but it's a really easy city to ride through. They've added a ton of bike lanes all over town. It's, uh, it's safer and easier than it's ever been to ride a bike in Paris. And it's highly recommended as probably the best way to get around town above ground, lower effort than walking, wind in your hair, if you have hair, it's fantastic. <laughs> First couple of things. One, if you come from the other side of the road, like you drive on the left-hand side of the road, your brakes are probably inverted. Jess is Australian, but she's I learned. Am. Yes. How do you... Uh... So the right brake is your back brake. Yeah. When in doubt, use both brakes. Yes, use both brakes slowly and go into it. Most of the biking, regular biking safety stuff, if you know how to ride a bike, you'll get. But that's an, an important one. Another one for Americans is you're not allowed to turn right on red. However, if there's a red light and a little sticker that will show you, you can turn right on red. There's always an exception, as is the case of everything in France to every rule. Last two things as we get on, we uh, are gonna be riding against traffic on a couple of streets, which is allowed on some streets and not on others. This one is one of those, traffic's going that way, we're gonna go that way. I'll show you how we know the difference. Hint, look down. Don't compromise your outfit. Skirts work. Skirts work. <laughs> you just, ladies, you can look as good as you want riding in Paris, no you should. No what is necessary? No lycra Oh, no necessary. lycra necessary. No. Yeah. You can, you can wear your museum outfit, yep. your bike, your lunch outfit, date outfit. You're set. You're set. I'm wearing jeans. And speaking of wearing stylish things, Kleska sent me this really nice helmet, which I've been wanting for years and going for it because it's compact and I can shove it in my bag and forget about it. And it does protect your head. And for anybody that's going to say something to the effect of like, well, what, but wouldn't it collapse? That's not how helmets work. Okay. If you're going to hit something, it's going to protect you. So thank you to Kleska for keeping me safe. One of the rules in Paris is that you don't have to wear a bike helmet unless if you're over the age of eight, I think. Jess, I'm asking you. I'm, I'm just checking if this person's wearing a helmet. Sorry. So if you're over the age of 12, you uh, don't have to wear a helmet in Paris. I used to not wear a helmet. I've started wearing a helmet now that I have one that's this stylish and convenient. Uh, and I just make myself wear it and it's, it's fantastic. I know, you can pop it in your pannier, hey? I, I pop it in wherever I feel like popping it and that's mm. where it stays. And then you pop it out. And then I pop it out. And then <laughs> it's really just like, it's that easy. So anyways, thank you Kloska for sending this. They didn't pay me to say this, they just sent me a free helmet and I really appreciate it and it was totally worth it. Totally worth it, I say, as I say it was free. I definitely never wanted to wear a helmet because they just always felt a little bit too nerdy. This does not feel nerdy. I think it looks as good as a helmet's gonna look and I really like it. And it's super reflective in the back too. They put these little crystals in there. It blinds people, which is perfect because then they won't hit you because they're swerving off to somewhere else. It's great. And with that, let's hop on our bikes and get going from here. Jess isn't getting onto the road to join us here, but this is a rule that you can't break. Bikes are only allowed on the street and in bike paths. Uh, so don't ride on the sidewalk. Anyways, that's another good rule. Um, you, you can get fined for that. So make sure you only ride on the street or in bike lanes. And when you're riding against traffic, you wanna look for this little guy riding and the arrow pointing against traffic. That's also a way you can know as a pedestrian which way to look on traffic. If you see that arrow, you know the traffic is going the opposite direction. So handy little hint walking around. All right, let's go. Okay. Take us out. We're gonna talk a little bit about signs to look out for. This one is do not enter for cars, but the sof means accept. And there's a little picture of a bike so you know you can go this way. Jess has done a good job of stopping not on the bike lane. She's about to break that though. For the sake of those of us that live here, you don't wanna stop in the bike lane. This is a bike lane going the opposite direction and it's really tempting to stop in it to cross over. That's a no-no, don't do that. It's tempting to walk in it, don't do that. It's also tempting to walk in it. Please don't, please don't walk in bike lanes. If you see the little green box, with a biker in it, you see the bike lane laid out. There's other space you can walk. You should definitely do that. The river is a phenomenal place to get your bearings and to go for a nice little ride, except in the evenings when it gets super, super crowded. Uh, with Paris Plage right now, this is the beaches of Paris. It's also a little bit more crowded, but since it's August, there's nobody around. Saturday and Sunday mornings on the weekends, you get out early, there's nobody here. And ever since they reclaimed this from uh, car traffic, it's basically just one long park pedestrian zone. As a bike, you're basically a pedestrian, wouldn't you say that? Pedestrians have right of way. But pedestrians have right of way over. Yep, so you, you should not ride through the streets ringing your bell for pedestrians to get out of the way. You can certainly ring your bell 
to warn them you're coming. Yep. But it's not up to them to move around you. So practice your swerving. So do practice your swerving. If they're stepping into your lane of traffic, uh, like they're jaywalking, definitely ring your bell. Um, but it's going to be incumbent on you not to crash. Hi. Just trying to fill in the sound effects. I was going to say hi. Thank you. How are you doing back there, Dad? How's your first ride in on your trip to Paris going so far? This is your first ride. So far, so good? So far, so good. Okay. These little stopping sections here, you'll see these, these little stopping sections at the very beginning. Basically, anytime you find a stoplight, you might see one of these stopping sections where you've got this dotted line and some bikes here. That means that if there are cars, you can pull around to the front of the line and get in front of them and then take off. You obviously want to be careful in traffic, but cars are tend to be fairly forgiving here compared to like in the States, for example. They will give you the right of way. Obviously be very careful, make sure they see you. You gotta be safe, but there are instances where you can sneak around and, and get ahead of them. So this means that on red, we could turn right. This little yield triangle will have a bike and an arrow in it that's either pointing right or straight, meaning that you can go through that intersection or take a right when it's red. Obviously you wanna make sure that there is no other traffic. You gotta look both ways. Make sure you're not cutting anyone off. You do have to yield to anybody that's already in the intersection or coming through, but then you can take off yourself. I did make a rather painful video on how to use Vélib. So that's one way that you can get a bike. It's the bike sharing service here in Paris that used to be the gold standard and is now kind of struggling a little bit. There are jump bikes from Uber and Lime now that you can use. And then of course you can rent bikes from like Bike About Tours through these bikes we're borrowing right now. There's some bike rental guys down on the river. You'll find them. You can rent bikes from any of those guys, rent them downtown, or if you want to get uh, adjusted first. You want to make sure that you uh, feel confident, com <laughs> you feel comfortable and confident on your bike. Like my dad's getting his little tour here. You can also take tours from Bike About or from Fat Tire, who Jess works from. They're both great companies. They do different styles of tours around town, but all the same thing. You're gonna have a great time with a guide, and they'll bounce you around and uh, teach you the ropes. And then you can rent a bike and ride in style. This bike lane as to the one next That's a great question. Jess, how, why, why did he choose this? Why did we choose this bike lane and not the one next to us? So originally there was a two-way bike lane here, yeah. which there still is. The signs on the ground still show two-way bike lane, but they opened up even more bike space um, on Route of Rivoli. So now you can actually ride going this way in a whole separate lane. So why not have two wide lanes for both things? That's how I see it. Some people still do the two-way yeah. and then leave this one wide open. I don't do that. Um, but actually, sometimes they turn it off. So right now we're riding on the road, not in the back lane. Right, which you can do. Yeah, which they, you're allowed to do. You're allowed to ride in the road still, but it's not as protected. This is a good spot to show that what people are really... A lot of pedestrians are very mad because cyclists sometimes cross Yeah. what I call the zebra crossing. I don't think you call it that. But we call it a crosswalk, but still. Zebra crossing. Definitely be careful. But you're supposed to let the pedestrians cross the zebra crossing and then cross on the red line. I admit, I sometimes sneak over. In the expanded bike lanes, a number of them follow commuter trains, like Line 1 has a lot of people that commute to work on it. So they opened up bike lanes directly above it to lighten the load during COVID on those. I love riding through the city. I'd say the very center of the city where we are right now is probably the worst part because it's so crowded and has so many pedestrians. And there are other parts where you'll struggle with like, you know, scooters jumping into the bike lane, doing things they shouldn't be doing. There's always some competition for space, but Overall, it's a very safe and chill thing. And if you can take your time and not rush across town, you'll be even safer and have even more fun. Other benefits to riding include some of the obvious stuff like, hey, you're gonna get some exercise while you're bouncing around. You have your own seat with you, so it's better than walking because you don't have to work as hard as walking. You can cover a lot more distance. And as opposed to the Metro, you're able to see what you're passing. So if we were in the Metro right now, we'd be passing all this stuff. We'd have no idea it was overhead. We're just stuck in the dark. Maybe crowded in with a bunch of people who haven't worn deodorant in a while. Who knows? But instead we're up here with some fresh air running through at least Jess's hair and uh, able to enjoy things like Tour Saint-Jacques and Hotel de Ville. And we'll even be able to see Notre Dame here for a second. And if we wanted to, we could divert and go see Notre Dame, bounce around it, you know, as close as we're allowed to get to it right now. And uh, you know, we're free. Ultimately, that's the thing. We're free, free to roam. It may be a little bit confusing sometimes between the pedestrian and the main stoplights. There are also these bike lane stoplights that'll tell you whether or not you have the right way to go. Definitely listen to those. Locals are gonna run through a lot of red lights, but remember, you can get ticketed for it. It's not recommended. Be careful. Okay, goodbye.
Yeah, I was gonna say, do you want to tell us why we should lock up our bikes? This hasn't been made public yet, so I've been. I figured well, I'd give you the chance to say something. To be fair, I did have my bike locked up. You did? Yes, I had uh, a, a lovely bike locked up that Jay had lent me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that I enjoyed for six days, and then someone stole it. I parked it at 2 a.m. And at 8 a.m. it was gone from outside my apartment. So if you have a very nice bike, don't park it outside your apartment. Or get like six locks. <laughs> Thank you, Hemiway, for sending us the bike. We enjoyed it. Obviously such a great bike that someone had to have it. Clearly. Had it's to... so great. It was too hot not to steal. Lock up your bikes. It's probably the best way to go. How, so, Dad, how is this first riding experience? Very good. Yeah? Loving it. Do you feel more comfortable? You were feeling a little bit uncomfortable about it beforehand. Do you feel more comfortable now? No, I, I feel fine about it, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's good. I mean, it'll take a little bit to get used to the signage. And when you talked about the triangles in yeah. terms of being able to turn and so forth, I was expecting something larger. Ah, uh, yeah. And it was much smaller. It's basically uh, a sticker. Yeah. So, figuring some of those things out and learning where to look for the lights, especially when you have multiple lanes, oh, so you yeah. have multiple lights. Yep. I tend to look clear across the street, like yep. you would in the U.S., but that will turn green before the one near you turns yes. green. and that light's not for you. And that's right, so. That's a really good point. For North Americans, we think of the stoplight being across the street, but in Europe, they're always on your corner, so they're gonna be right next to you. Keep an eye out for that. It's great if you have some knee problems. That's also good so for knee problems. because he just couldn't walk around all day, but he could jump on a bike and go anyway. Yeah. It was fabulous. Thanks to today's patron producer, Timothy Gottrich, for sending us out here to ride around and show you how to do it safely. Obviously, probably goes without saying, I'm riding around filming myself, but I've got a lot of experience doing it. So, like... I was just about to say, hey, Jay. I, I, I can stop one-handed. This is fine. We just had to stop for this crosswalk. Maybe don't film one-handed. I have had a couple of crashes filming one-handed in the city. But yeah, that's definitely a thing. Thanks to my patrons for sending me out to risk my life and limb to bring you entertainment from the streets of Paris. Thanks to Kloska for the helmet. I'll, of course, put a link below if you're interested in grabbing one of these guys. I do really like it. And if you're interested in getting a bike tour uh, while you're here to get your bearings, I will put links to those below as well, as well as some videos that I made in the past if you want to get a preview of what they look like, what it's like getting a bike tour in Paris. It's honestly the best way to get oriented to the city right away, see a lot, put in a little less effort than you expect and just have a nice time. So highly recommend it. And of course, if we come up with any addendums in the interim, we'll put those in here. I also have a little section on biking in my guide to the city, but if you'd like to get a full guide to the city that I wrote and have kept up and going for the last few years, along with over 200 recommendations of places to eat and drink and get coffee, we'll then go ahead and grab one of those down in the link below as well. And we'll see you bright and early one of these mornings sometime soon for some more delightful moments riding around from Paris. Sadly, my dad will be leaving, so There'll be very few, well, there'll probably be some more videos with my dad coming non-chronologically, but the rest of us will see you here from Paris. I bet you soon. <laughs> oh, she's such a good teacher. Anyway, see you later. Final thoughts on biking around in Paris? If it's your first time bicycling in Paris, I'd recommend going on a tour. In all honesty, it was much easier being able to ride behind Jay and Jess. Uh, they gave me tips, and then I didn't have to worry too much about uh, all the other traffic and so forth, I could follow them and get comfortable with what was going on. So I would do a bike tour to start with and that will get you into a comfort level that will make riding through Paris much easier, I think. Good advice.